Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome back to my channel. Back with the video, and of course, I'm using uh, starting another series which I mentioned yesterday. It's called Understanding RF using Multisim. Uh, Multisim is the tool that probably every engineering student might be familiar with it. You use this to design your circuits and things like that. But you can also use this uh, tool to understand RF communication and you can design your own communication circuits. So the last video that I made was actually harmonic decomposition. Uh, this particular video is going to be all about amplitude modulation. We're going to learn, we're going to see the flow graph, or we're going to look at the circuit that is generating amplitude modulation. Also, at the same time, it is also demodulating this as well in the same circuit. Uh, two important blocks that are there is actually this block. This is called a mixer block. Uh, mixer is sort of like a multiplier block. Mixer is actually a physical device that you normally uh, by uh, it's either in a form of a connector packaging or it's in a form of an SMD and things like that depends on your application what type of a circuit how small your circuit is and things like that so let's walk you through with the circuit um, it's an amplitude modulated uh, circuit which is available in the sample file of your multi-sim when you download multi-sim or when you install multi-sim it's available in a sample file so, uh, so as you can clearly see, you, you got to have your modulating signal and then you got to have your carrier signal. And these two needs to be mixed together, which means multiplies together. I made a video on it where I have done the mathematical formation of this. Uh, but this is just going through with this particular uh, amplitude modulation circuit using a circuit diagram. Now, when you look at closely, you have 5 volt peak and one kilohertz of signal. So immediately I'm identifying this as to be my modulating signal. Why? Because I have other source that is there, which is at much higher frequency, which is about 10 kilohertz. So carrier frequencies are always going to be at much higher as compared to your modulating frequency. So this is what that modulating, uh, uh, this particular source is generating. Five volts peak to peak, you can double click on it. You can look at the property, you can change the frequency, you can change the voltage, you can do whatever you want by double clicking on that. Now, if you were to look at this, this is basically your op amp. Why? Because this has a chip number, which is called LM741, which is actually your op amp circuit. By looking at your circuit, you gotta have pin seven and pin four has a bias of 15 volts. Plus, if you were to look at the diagram of it, since your positive side is grounded, this thing and it's and and you have uh, your resistor which is connecting at your inverting side, which is at the negative side. So this is immediately by looking at that particular circuit, looking at this op amp configuration, you would know this is an inverting amplifier. And what is generally the gain of an inver inverting amplifier is there is a feedback that is going from here to your output that has a resistor value of 10 kilo ohms and then you have an input resistor which is, let's just call it r6 generally r1 in your basic circuit diagrams is also 10k so the ratio is basically your feedback resistor divided by your input resistor so 10 kilo ohms divided by 10 kilo ohms is one with minus one volt so five volts uh, minus 5 volts. So this is what an inverting amplifier do and these two are just nothing but biasing uh, In inverting amplifier you have a positive sign which is grounded. That's all there is to it Now this the signal is being amplified uh, This being amplified since nothing is being amplified basically you're getting 5 volts It's going into something called a mixer now what this particular circuit is doing this particular resistor because you can use a space button to either have 5 volts or either you can have it grounded this will basically provide that one plus a times m of t which is there in the equation of amplitude modulation so this is what it does so this this is this button now this is your modulating signal this is going into a multiplier circuit so when you're multiplying so now this modulating signal which is going into it that has a frequency of one kilohertz that is being multiplied by a five volt peak voltage with 10 kilohertz of frequency so this is actually performing multiplication process so after this at this output which is connected to your oscilloscope which is this oscilloscope uh, this is basically gives you the amplitude modulated output that's the first thing that you will get all right amplitude modulated output when i click on this when i run the simulation that's what you would observe now whenever you're performing uh, the reception part the first thing after your antenna you will receive our amplitude modulator signal which is coming out of this first multiplier 
and you will always in the basic amplitude modulation of full carrier you will multiply at the receiving end your modulated signal with your carrier signal again that's why this is being multiplied by 10 kilohertz signal again exactly the same thing that you have used to modulate your signal at the receiving end so this is where the transmission part is done all right now this is what's happening at the receiving end all right so when you multiply this your modulated signal by 10 kilohertz by carrier signal definitely you will have what you will have twice the frequency components which will be present in your in your output this is what we're visualizing at port a of your oscilloscope number one now after this when you have a frequency component double the frequency component of your original frequency so you might have some component at 20 kilohertz and things like that you need to actually perform low pass filtering and this is being done through this resistor and capacitor network all right i hope you're understanding this because re remember at this output you have signal which is coming fc plus fm at this output at this point you have fc minus fm so you have component which is 10 kilohertz plus one which is 11 kilohertz that is going into this mixer this mixer is mixing this again with 10 kilohertz of signal so you have 11 plus 10 then 11 minus 10 one kilohertz 11 plus 10 is about what 20 21 11 plus 10 is 21 kilohertz and then 11 minus 1 is actually 1 kilohertz that 1 kilohertz is going to be the frequency that we are interested in what type of a filter do i need i need a low pass filter that's why you have this low pass filter network after this low pass filter network you could have just taken the output from here but they're using another op amp as well now this op amp if you were to look at it again this is in the same configuration as an inverting op amp look notice the notice the the resistor values as well so you're getting a gain of what one 15 feedback resistor divided by your resistor whatever that resistor is which is exactly the same value which is 15 divided by 15 you're getting one whatever the incoming voltage is multiply that by that and you're getting an output this is what this basic circuit diagram is all about when you're generating amplitude modulation using multisim let's run this and prove our concept is right all right the simulation is running let's just first look at the output of this particular uh, oscilloscope which is connected to the output of my modulator a modulated signal just at the transmitter. this is what has been transmitted so now let's look at it and this is what we would expect to see A hundred percent amplitude modulated signal using this particular oscilloscope now this is what you're observing from here from this this oscilloscope let me just put this here this is the output from here now when you observe this this is what you're observing at the output this this is this is in red the output red red is this all right this is what is being multiplied together all right so you have much higher components which are present here in this red graph and after the filtering part after the filter you can see this blue line which is connected to this oscilloscope port b this is the output you're getting after this which is in terms of blue so this is what you're getting the output so this is exactly going to be the same frequency as your incoming frequency which is going to be somewhere around one kilohertz so this is the basic idea behind this uh, particular circuit let me just reverse this so you can see it in white um, this is the output before the filtering part this is the output when you have this modulated signal and your carrier signal multiplied together you'll have higher components and after the filtration part which is done through this rc network which is actually basically controlling the tau um, because tau is the one that is defining that is is it going to delay a little bit or is it going to follow exactly the same thing uh, this is what is being controlled by this rc network 15 kilo times 22 nanofarads this is the time that it will take and this is what you're seeing the output in in blue so this is how you actually uh, this is how you would understand uh, available amplitude modulator signal this is how you can design your amplitude modulating uh, modulator using multisim so if you guys like this particular video make sure to subscribe to my channel and uh, thanks for watching 
And if you have any questions, leave it in the comment section.